evaluator number two, which is, who is uh, Judith Berber, will introduce speaker number two, ob objectives, Miss Judith Berber. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Uh, the second speaker is Muriel Shabazz. His, her is evaluation and feedback first speech. And the purpose of this speech is for the member to present a speech and receive feedback from, from the evaluator. The member will deliver a well-organized speech on any topic, maybe humorous, informational, or any style the member chooses. Thank you. Mariel Shabazz has been a Toastmaster since 2018. She earned her Distinguished Toastmaster Award in 2020. She delights in visiting national as well as international Toastmaster clubs via Zoom. One of her goals is to network support and create Toastmaster partnerships that enriches the Toastmaster Club meeting experience. Today, she is working from the Pathways Leadership Development Project, Level 1, Evaluation and Feedback. The title of her presentation is The Three Lessons Learned from the Woman King the three lessons learned from the woman king. Please welcome to the Masters of Evaluation virtual stage, distinguished Toastmaster, Muriel Sabas. It was March 14th and the year was, and I remember this day because a group of us were going to see a long anticipated movie hit the theaters. I couldn't wait to go and watch it on the big screen. The movie was Love Jones, starring Lawrence Tate and Nia Long. Now, some of you know exactly what year that was, so you don't have to worry about it. You can just, you can just Google it. It's a story about falling in love, falling out of love, and then falling back in love with the same person. I am the eternal romantic. I have watched this movie over 17 times. Sometimes my daughter, Jamila, she'll call me up and she'll say, hey, mom, what you doing? <laughs> Watching Love Jones again? Well, I may have been. Many of you have a favorite movie or a few favorite movies. How about you, Daniel? Tell us what is one of your favorite movies, Daniel? Okay. How about you, James Scott Oliver? Tell us the name of one of your favorite movies. Just one. All-time favorite would have to be Die Hard. Die Hard. All right. How about our Zoom master, Mr. John White? Tell us just one of your favorite movies. A favorite movie and a favorite line, Boomerang. Love should have had your ass home last night. <laughs> well... Well, I want to ask one of our guests, Suzanne, how about you? What is one of your favorite movies? Uh, Schindler's List. Schindler's List, yes, that was a great one. Absolutely. Recently, I found another movie that I have watched nine times since it premiered September 16th. Yes, nine times. I know some of you may be thinking, Savage really needs to get a life. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters guests, and to my fellow lonely moviegoers. Yes, the movie that has captured my heart and my attention is The Woman King. Now, this story is centers around an elite class of African female soldiers called the Agoji, and their powerful general leader played brilliantly by Viola Davis. The Agoji soldiers, they were also known as the Amazons. They were known for their physical strength, their tenacity, being, protect, being protectors and custodians of African tradition, language, and culture. They were also known as fierce defenders of their homeland and their king. 
Now, this movie, it takes place in Dahomey, West Africa, which is now called Benin. And it's the year 1823. This movie, it has it all. Breathtaking cinematography, dazzling fashions, beautiful natural hairstyles, a spectacular mu music score. It has an intriguing storyline. But most importantly, it has deep lessons and messages many of us can relate to. Now, what messages, you ask? Ah, that is what my speech is all about today. For those of you who have not seen it yet, please do go see it on the big screen and you can judge the film for yourself. I'm not gonna give too much about the film so you can really go and truly enjoy it. Message number one. In one of the movie scenes, the Agoji general, she had to keep explaining herself to her allies and to the king why it was so important for her to go and free a group of captives. Her closest ally kept trying to convince her, don't go, don't go. So the general, she stopped explaining herself to her friend and she finally took off to free the captives. This quote really demonstrates the essence of this first message. Life is so much simpler when you stop explaining yourself to people and just do what works for you. In other words, never share a big dream with a small-minded person. Some of us can relate to this message because how many times have we shared an idea with a friend or a family member and they shoot it down and we never move forward because we're so concerned about what they may say or what they may think. So we abort our own dreams and we muzzle our voices in order to please others. This brings me to the second message of the, move, of the woman king. The king of the Omi, he wanted the general to stay at the palace because they were going to have a celebration for a recent victory. She defied the king's orders and she refused to stay at the palace. This showed boldness, this showed courage under fire, and it also showed an indifference to consequences. Once she made the decision to defy the king's orders, and I like to say, the infinite resources of the universe opened ways for her to accomplish her goal of freeing the captive. Now, originally, the general was going to make the trip to free the captives alone. Now, we know that the Agoji general is a badass, but going in alone mm, to fight hundreds of rivals by herself. But what happened is other Agoji soldiers, they joined her and they helped the general in her pursuit to free the captives. This was one of the most emotional scenes in the movie for almost everyone in every theater screening I attended. Why? Because it illustrated the support and the respect that the Agogis had for their leader. People in the audience felt the love, they felt the unity, they felt the gratitude displayed on the screen and they were touched by it. Many in the various audiences, they clapped, they cheered, and some even had tears in their eyes. I know I did. The message here is that many times we have a greater, a bigger, and a better vision than those in authority. After freeing the captive, the general and the Agoji soldiers, they returned to the palace. And the king, he bowed to the Agoji general and those under her command. The king called her the bravest of the brave. He acknowledged that she had a bigger and larger vision than he did. The quote that expresses this best, when you care about what other people think, you will always be their prisoner. Which brings me to my third message. There's a scene that reveals some trauma that the Agoji general experienced in the past. 
For years, she was unable to let these horrible circumstances that took place in her life, she was unable to let them go. But finally, she was able to face them and she was free to experience the fullness of her life. Too often, I have allowed my past experience to dictate what I do in my present day and in the future. These last quotes sum this lesson up. Don't stumble over something behind you because you cannot go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. I know some people have concerns. They have concerns about the historical accuracy of this movie which is really a fictionalized version of historical facts. But aren't most films, some say it's Hollywood versus history. The accurate accounts and all of the historical research, it's all available to us. The Kingdom of Dahomey, yes, they were involved big time in the transatlantic slave trade. That was not really portrayed as much on the screen. However, whatever we would like to know factually about the kingdom of Dahomey and the OJs, we can find that in the research. The film has brought people together. I want you to see what lessons when you watch your next movie, or maybe you are like me, you have a movie that you watch eight, nine, 10, 17 times. What messages or lessons do you get? The ones I mentioned was stop explaining yourself and just go and do the damn thing. Number two, don't share your big dream with small-minded people. And number three, don't stumble over something behind you. Mr. Toastmaster. Our next evaluator is Judith and she's doing Muriel's speech. Judith, you're up. No, Scott, we are on this whole gender things now. So we call somebody a uh, Toastmaster Scott, because we don't know what the gender of anybody is. Just my comment on this. All right, so going to the evaluation of Muriel's speech. <clears throat> okay, so Muriel, I'm going to look at this whole content delivery language of your speech. And certainly it was a great speech. You have a great enthusiasm. This is a lot of energy with your speech. And it was certainly very clear about your the love of your movie. And certainly the there you had tons of memorable phrases and explaining why you actually like this movie so much and watched it nine times, which is already an amazing thing by itself. Now, um, <clears throat> It certainly, uh, you left us with a lot of phrases that, you know, life is simpler if you stop explaining yourself to people or um, you cannot change the beginning or you can change the ending. There's a lot of interesting phrases that you certainly take away with your speech. Now, the thing is about delivery is that it would be nice if you maybe stand up with your speech so we can have some gestures. Your glasses glaring is also is sometimes an issue. And that is one other thing, is that while you were speaking, your eyes seem to be going to the right and going to the left. And I didn't understand whether this was about you reading your text or why it was happening. So that you may have to think about that one. The other thing is that this is my own personal thing. I am not a person who loves questioning the audience because sometimes people just don't answer. And then you're waiting and waiting. Who is going to say what? And then finally somebody says something. So it's, I think it's a good idea maybe just to ask one question. Mm. Then I have one other thought about this movie that you liked so much many, many years ago which I personally haven't heard of, which doesn't really mean anything. 
is the fact is that I think it would have been a great thing if you say, let me share you some of the greatest movie I have seen in the last months or so and why it was so great. Because I also had a movie many years ago that was also fabulous, but this really spoke to me. And let me tell you why you have to see it. And uh, that's, but, you know, it was really great. I certainly enjoyed it. And I took away a lot of interesting phrases. That's quite memorable of your speech. And it certainly was great. Thank you.